please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, Ejo, e subscribe, subscribe, eh, hete. Face TV. Uswobi. Our Fulani kidnappers told us after buying enough weapons, they will bombard Igoland, taking over Nigeria. Methodist prelate Uche recounts audio. The prelate of Methodist Church, Nigeria, His Eminence Samuel Uche, has revealed that the Fulani headsmen who kidnapped him and others tortured him such that he nearly lost his sight after hitting his right eye on a tree. The cleric, who narrated his near-death experience in the hands of the kidnapper, said they were eight in number, all Fulani headers, with one who claimed to have been born in Abia State. They have reported that the prelate, his chaplain, Reverend Abidemi Shitu, and the Bishop of Owere, R.T. Reverend Dennis Mack, were adopted on Sunday along the Enugu Portacot Expressway in the Umuneoche local government area of Abia State. Uche, who recounted his experience at a press conference held at Methodist Church, Yaba, Lagos State, on Tuesday, alleged that some military personnel from the north were aiding the kidnappers in the activities in the region. The prelate said, these people came out from the bush. They divided themselves into three places. Some people fired at us and there were another group in front to make sure that we didn't run away. They fired shots at our vehicles and eventually they abducted three of us. The communication man of the church was able to escape. The driver was able to escape. They abducted me, the Bishop of Owere, and my chaplain. And they took us to the bush and were torturing us. It was in the process of the torture that I hit my right eye on a tree. Even when blood was flowing and I was soaking my eyes with a handkerchief, they didn't feel like anything happened. All they said was that we should follow them, that they were not actually against Nigerian citizens, but against the government, that the government is a bad government. They are Fulani boys. All the eight are Fulanis. They said that the day they will see the president or any of his representatives, they will chew him raw. That he is their brother, but he has disappointed them and has disappointed Nigeria. I said, even though I'm part of the government, I'm a churchman, I'm not a government official. They said, okay, that is what has saved you. We would have killed you outright without asking for any ransom. But now that you are a churchman, let's go inside the bush. I trekked up to 15 kilometers, but I knew that we were rigmaroling, going up, going down. And eventually, at 11 p.m., they said, okay, now we can negotiate. Each of us will pay 50 million naira. And we are all going to pay 150 million naira. I thought it was a joke. I said, we, are, we were going to pay 10 million naira. And they said, what? Don't say that again. They lifted their knife to cut me. I said, please hold on. According to the cleric, the leader of the group is about 35 years old why the others are about 18. He said that they had taken his rings, chain, and the money that they had on them and insisted on 150 million naira ransom. The clergyman said the abductors later reduced the ransom to 100 million naira, warning them that if they negotiate, they will be killed. I said, okay, we will pay you 100 million naira. After some time, they said, where is the money? And I said, this is Sunday night. How can we get this money this night? And you know that there is this seat at home in Igbo land. We can't afford the money now. Be patient till morning. We will make contact. Uche said the kidnappers lost patience. Laid Bishop Dennis Mark down, raised a knife to cut him. Why another pointed a gun at him, the prelate, 
to show that they were serious. I told them we will raise the money for you. But the irony of it, where they were sit situated, the soldiers, all of Fulani extractions, Nigerian soldiers, they were there at Lomara Junction and these boys were going behind them. Meanwhile, they kept their cows somewhere, numbering about 200. He said some people were taking care of the cows while their doctors were parading them around the bush until they settled at a place. They said, when are you bringing the money? I said, by 12 noon. I will call the people. I've contacted whether the money has been raised. And I called them. They said they were gathering the money. And they heard it because they said, I will use my phone to talk. They can't use their phone. They don't want to be tracked. Their leader was born in Igoland, but his parents have died. He said he was born around Umahia, Amuzuku, and his father was a cow dealer. The boy understood Igbo, he said. He said the leader threatened to kill them if they informed security operatives when they had raised the ransom of 100 million naira. The leader asked them to buy five Ghana Moscow bags and put 20 million in each bag. They left to pick the ransom while four others stayed behind with guns. He said, around 5.30 p.m., the youngest boy, who I think is a younger brother to their commander, said, Oga, congratulations, you are free. We can go now. We have got our money. We can go. Let me show you the road. They took us to Old Road, where they wrote, Welcome to Imo and goodbye from Abia. They told us that after buying enough weapons, they were going to bring all those people that were driven away from Zamfara, Castina, Sambisa Forest, that they were all coming to locate themselves in Igbo land and deal with us. He said, do you know about the expressway? We are in all bush there. We are also in the south-south. We are waiting for the slightest signal. We will finish you people and take over this land. They claim that Nigeria belongs to Fulani. The priest maintained that military personnel of Fulani extraction were aiding the kidnappers who disguised as elders in the daytime but kidnappers at night. He called on the government to take a decisive action. Otherwise, what is happening in the north will be a child's play. He said it was the Methodist Church Nigeria and members of the church that made efforts to secure his release and not security agencies of the government. They said, okay, we can go. So that's how we came back. So uh, the people have been saying, even some people, I don't know what they wanted to achieve, that I said, when did they see me to say that it was I pop that released me? <laughs> when did they see me? When did I see I pop? I didn't say that I pop. So I don't know, they were trying to bring in political yes, and that's political. where we are in. It's unfortunate. Yes, this is what ha exactly happened. And all the efforts that were made was by my church. Do you understand? Yes. Every effort made was by Methodist Church, my not, and not, not, not government. No. It was Methodist Church, my church. I want the press to know what actually happened so that people will not come and tell me what a true story. For instance, a government said they, they secured my release. I never saw the government. <laughs> that was the spiritual leader of Methodist Church Nigeria. He has railed out what eventually happened during his captivity in the kidnappers' den. This is EU Television. We're going to be coming forward with more updates concerning this. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel and click on the notification button because we don't want to miss any one of the updates we're going to be coming forward with. Like, share, and comment, and tell us what you think about this situation. Because this is a mind-blowing revelation that the spiritual leader of Methodist Church has just done. Please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, enjoy a subscribe, subscribe, and hit it.
Face TV. Mosuobi.